It was the last visit Chief Apostle Wilhelm Leber would ever make to Cape Town in active ministry. For many new apostolic people, this encounter was destined to be a great experience. At most airports around the world, great reunions between loved ones usually take place beyond the passport control and baggage carousels. It is usually only behind some barrier or other that old acquaintances, friends or loved ones wait. Whenever Chief Apostle Wilhelm Leber lands in Cape Town, the great reunion happens right away. He had barely set foot on terra firma and started walking in the direction of the passport control from the narrow corridor connecting the airplane to the terminal when the first cell phone cameras began to flash in his direction. At passport control, the chief apostle walks purposefully toward counter number one. It has to be that one and no other because the next brother in faith is already waiting behind the counter to shake his hand and stamp his passport. Some of the airport staff are members of the new apostolic church and along with them, the cameraman from NAC TV had been waiting patiently for the arrival of the chief apostle. The local new apostolic broadcaster secured special permission to start filming as early as possible. The cameraman refuses to let the chief apostle out of his focus. A traveller on the same flight is astonished and wonders what's the big deal about the man in the jacket. District Apostle Noel Barnes made his way into the baggage carousel hall, as had everyone else who'd managed to figure out that the Chief Apostle had arrived. Here, greetings were exchanged in all earnest. The camera crew from the New Apostolic Church International and NAC TV also took the opportunity to interview the Chief Apostle. Also erstmal bin ich froh, dass wir hier gut gelandet sind, angekommen sind. Bin dankbar dafür, dass alles geklappt hat und äh, es ist natürlich schön, so viele Brüder und Schwestern hier gleich zu begrüßen und äh, man hat gleich das Gefühl eines wirklich herzlichen Willkommens und das tut gut, das ist sehr schön. District Apostle Barnes also shared his thoughts on the upcoming events. We, we are extremely happy that the Chief Apostle has arrived safely and now our weekend starts, a weekend in heaven. <laughs> While leaving the airport terminal, the Chief Apostle took the time to further engage with our members where after he was taken to his accommodation. There was a quiet satisfaction among those who had come to see him. Now, final preparations for this memorable visit could begin. Chief Apostle Leber had more than 20 hours of travel behind him, including a short stop in Dubai. It is evening in Cape Town with the full moon rising majestically over the airport skyline, Chief Apostle Helper Jean-Luc Schneider made his way through the airport terminal to join the Chief Apostle on his last official visit to Cape Town. The next stop on the itinerary was the small church which is located on the De Grendel wine farm. It is a prefabricated building surrounded by neatly mowed lawns and bordered by a small garden. The flowers and vegetables had been planted in the shape of the emblem. Here, the retired shepherd Samuel Butler and his wife, who'd already been working on the farm for 50 years, waited with great excitement for the arrival of the entourage. 
It was he who had asked the farmer for a piece of land on which to build a church. At that time, Samuel Butler was indeed the butler of the estate owner. The two of them had enjoyed a good relationship. The farmer greatly appreciated him as an employee and agreed to give him the piece of land. The farmer had since passed away, but the church still enjoys the privilege of worshipping on this land with the permission of his son. The congregation has grown to over 200 members, so many that even the sacristy is filled with members during the divine service. For this reason, the farmer's son has decided to give the congregation a new piece of land in order to build a larger church with an auditorium. Shepherd Butler, with great excitement, said that the chief apostle Leber coming here for a visit is a chance I will only get once in a lifetime. Then the vehicles arrived. The opportunity was seized to present the proposed building plans to the chief apostle. District Apostle Barnes presented the drawings. Even for him, this visit was something special. After all, de Grendel is also his home congregation. All too soon, the visit was over, but not before the delegation recorded the historic visit in the visitor's register. Saturday morning was allocated for an open deck bus tour of the city. Members assembled around the red tour bus at the meeting point. Among them were senior members of the Golden Voices Choir from Hanover Park Congregation, Cape Town. We're from Hanover Park. Very privileged to be here, excited to be with our Chief Apostle. Even if you can just get a handshake from him, we'll be very, very glad, satisfied. One thing I can say, we, the Golden Voices of Hanover Park, are very, very proud to be here this morning. I, um, I feel so fortunate to be here this day. It's actually bringing tears into my eyes because when I heard the Chief Apostle was coming to South Africa, I asked the Lord to carry me through and grant me to see this day and the day of tomorrow. We're at Newlands Pass and we're very excited, hoping to see the Chief Apostle and it would be a really beautiful experience if he can come out and greet us, but we're just hoping to see him. And it's the best opportunity for us to meet up with him, because it's not often that we, as non-ministers, get to meet the Chief Apostle personally. And as you can see, the bus is right there, so we get to see him nice up and close. I'm here to see Chief Apostle, and this is the first time and very excited, very overwhelming, um, because we always get to see him on, on television. After the chief apostle had shaken just about every hand, he made his way to the bus. Joyous scenes emerged in a few precious minutes. I'm happy. Um, I feel pleased, extremely pleased. <laughs> Why are you feeling pleased? Because I took the both Chief Apostles' hands and it's rather tricky, so I know it's going to be the best year ever. Oh, wow! <laughs> okay, guys. Touch both 
feel blessed because it was an honor to greet the Chief Apostle with his hand. I wish him well for his preparation for tomorrow and everything of the best. The journey continued to the Zornebloom Church in District 6, where heartfelt moments were experienced. I'm seeing the bus uh, that have just arrived. Super excited. moment and now it's here we're really over excited and not even enough it's, it's not even enough to say we're so thankful that we could have this opportunity and we simply love it thank you okay just your feet oh my word overwhelmed overwhelmed uh, and uh, with great expectation uh, we hope our souls have the capacity to take in the volume of blessing <laughs> Toeval, a gross toeval. Oh, that is wonderful. That is, South Africa is wonderful. And we look to, to the Schweiz, it's very nice. And there is a place to the Stammapostel to greet you personally. One of the highlights, I'll call it. I'll call it one of the highlights. Now I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy. I'm going back to Switzerland and say, I made it, I made it. I'll go back, I made it. I, I don't think I'll ever get that opportunity. Um, of the calendar, I have five cruises to make, because it's a very special day. One in your life, two times, it gives you no And that's very beautiful. My dear brothers and sisters, Good morning. Good morning. it's nice to see you all on this beautiful day and uh, well, I'm happy uh, to have fellowship with you, some moments, to share some moments with you and to show that we belong together, we are bound together by the Holy Spirit. And uh, naturally we look forward to the coming Sunday, to the special service for the departed and uh, we want to prepare our hearts for that and it may be a special day of blessing. Wonderful, the children, what they presented here, you are wonderful people of God. Please let us remain faithful and uh, do that what is given as an advice to us from the altar, always. So, you see, I have some district apostles here and helpers in my company and uh, I'm sure you want to know who is now the chief apostle helper. <laughs> yes, please, that is uh, our friend. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> he has to say a few words. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come here. And, uh, 
introduce yourself to the members, to our brothers and sisters. Uh, I, I'm sure they will hear me, hear me uh, long enough <laughs> in the coming time. We have to use the few moments we have the chief apostle in our midst to listen to him. Don't you agree? <laughs> so, I think so. And then we have this is Apostle uh, Anderson from Australia. Yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, please show yourself. Australia, that's an English-speaking country, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell that um, a little story. I was once in, in Australia, and uh, we had also a little bus tour uh, around the city there. I don't know, was it in Sydney or somewhere? And. Um, the bus driver told something, and I didn't understand what he said. And besides me was a district apostle Latosai from Canada, naturally English speaking. And I asked him, did you understand what the bus driver said? And he said, not a word. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We have this Apostle Helper Zobotka from Canada here, also working in, uh, uh, now in, in Pakistan or Africa. in Africa, before in Pakistan, yeah, and, and some other, other countries. We have here this Apostle Montes Dioca from Brazil, and uh, well, all Spanish speaking people and uh, brothers and sisters will have special joy, yeah because naturally that is uh, um, the area where they speak Portuguese and he comes from Argent Uruguay or lives in Uruguay and there they speak Spanish so you can talk with him in Spanish and Portuguese. Yeah. Fine, brothers and sisters, let us um, enjoy these moments and uh, it's nice that I have such an impression, wonderful impression on this beautiful day of this small but uh, nice congregation and I wish you all the best in the future. May God always accompany you and uh, may you always feel well in the fellowship, in the congregation. We still live in the time where we have to say goodbye. The moment will come when this is not necessary anymore. So goodbye, see you tomorrow in the divine service. The next stop was the Slave Lodge. A trip up Signal Hill provided breathtaking views of the mother city. Lasting impressions were left on the visitors before the time came for them to prepare for the evening's choral concert in Silvertown. As is customary with a chief apostle visit, a festive choral concert 
in preparation for the Sunday Divine Service took place at the Silvertown Auditorium on Saturday the 2nd of March 2013. The Cape Town Adult Choir and Children's Choir presented a program with the underlying theme being the afterlife. So please be seated, brothers and sisters. So again, a hearty welcome. I am happy that we can share these moments. And uh, OK, uh, the last years since I'm chief apostle, I've been here every year, I was told. <laughs> so also in this year, 2013, and uh, Every time on the Saturday before the service, there was a concert. And also today, there's a concert. And uh, I must say, yes, you know. In his opening address, the chief apostle spoke about the special feeling of love that connects people. And during this time of preparation, connects us with the yonder world. Naturally, there's also a special atmosphere when we look to the Sunday to the service for the departed that fills us with a special feeling and that will be supported by that what will be presented by the choir, by the orchestra, by the children, all those who contribute. And uh, yeah, brothers and sisters, let us just open our hearts for that, that we have a close connection to the younger world, that we can really be a help, a support for those who are looking upon us. Let us make this day, the Sunday, a day of love. Love is that what combines us and what, what connects us all together. And what is so necessary with respect to the task we have to help those souls. Without love, that cannot be accomplished. The Apostle Paul says, and that always touches me very much, when I would have all the knowledge, all belief that I could move mountains, and when I would know all miracles, and would not have love, everything would not, would be nothing. Just imagine, I sometimes think about that, when we would know all miracles in this world, what would that be? Ah, that I would imagine that is heaven on earth to know all miracles. Brothers and sisters, brothers here, rectors of this area, just imagine we would know all miracles, but it's just nothing when we do not have love. So that shows what love is for quality, what a special gift from heaven. And this love is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So let's make use of this love. And let us now open our hearts for that. I think this gives also the opportunity to look a little bit into the younger world when we hear the melodies and that what will be presented and then we connect ourselves with the one or the other group and we give an invitation to all those longing souls that they may come and uh, that our Heavenly Father may provide for them everything what is necessary that they also find the way to salvation. The evening's program consisted of a wide variety of musical styles, some of which were rather heart-rending.
the rectors of Greater Cape Town and their spouses were invited to this performance. Also, the children's choir sang A Song for You and There's a Song in My Soul, both found in the children's hymnal Bright and Beautiful. The concert proved to be a very fitting final preparation for the Sunday's divine service for the departed. Brothers and sisters, thank you for this experience. It was outstanding, full of emotion, full of music, a firework of music, and we are very touched by that, what was performed, presented, and every piece has a special deep meaning and is an incentive for us to be a help and support for others, especially for the souls of the yonder world. It was a variety of different styles of different types of music, very soft ones, very um, magic, and, 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 and glorious ones, and uh, that represents a little bit also the circumstances in the yonder world. I mean, that will be different. Various realms, various situations where souls exist. And uh, because of this variety, which we really cannot actually grasp with our brain, I have invited also district apostles from all parts of the world. And uh, I think it's nice, you will have joy also when everyone introduces himself a little bit with one sentence, one or two sentences. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you will be happy to hear first the chief apostle helper, Schneider, <laughs> and he also will address you. I, told them yet they can speak in their language when they want. And his language would be French, but I think he has also some English words for you. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> I just can say one thing. Thank you. I assume you cannot imagine how much joy and how much comfort you provide in Europe for the CDs and the DVDs of the concerts. Just thank you for that. Or oh, I must confess, sometimes we're a little bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we, it seems to us that God has given all the gifts to Cape Town, <laughs> and there's nothing left for us. <laughs> but we don't forget that your music, your, your music is not only the result of gifts. It's an addition, an addition of gifts and commitment, and practice, and work, and work, and work. <laughs> thank you for that. And a special thank you for the Apostle, Chief Apostle spoke about it, for the new apostolic added value you put in your music. This wonderful message. Yesterday, today, and forever. The love, the Jesus love, which is every man. What a wonderful message for the yonder world. And then a special thanks for the children. I've got a personal message for their song. They song, I've a song in my soul, and this song is redeemed. And I asked myself, listening to them, shouldn't be this song a little bit louder in my soul? We didn't. And the answer is, it should and it could be louder in my soul. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
He didn't use one word in French, you know? <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Then we have a special guest from Australia, the District Apostle Anderson. I don't know if you understand him, because Australian <laughs> English is special, you know? <laughs> but please, say a few words in your language. <laughs> I'm allowed to speak in Australian today, <laughs> and that's really wonderful. Yeah, I would like to echo also the sentiments of our Chief Apostle Helper. The South African choirs, the Cape Town choirs, are of course legendary. And all over the New Apostolic World and beyond, because there are many who are touched by your music, many who are touched by your singing, who are not New Apostolic, but they are introduced to that. I certainly have personally uh, made sure that Others uh, have recordings of your singing and your playing and in that way, hopefully, they too will gain something out of that which we have learnt to respect and to love. And I must say today, having the privilege of being here and coming under this wonderful preparation for tomorrow, I'm sure, as the Chief Apostle said, it's reached into the realms of the beyond. And when I think of the realms of the beyond there, I must say I also think of uh, some choir masters that uh, I served under many years ago. I was in the choir for about 20 years and were, was... Uh, able to serve under a number of choir masters and they all had one thing in common and that was they all wanted to get me out of the choir. <laughs> <laughs> and some of those are in the beyond today and I, uh, I send an apology to them for making their lives so difficult. But again, it's a real joy to share this with you and to... Uh, to, to experience what was awesome today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have here the District Apostle Montes Dioca from Brazil. And uh, maybe not everybody speaks Spanish or Portuguese. Well, we have a translator here also. So please say a few words. Dear brothers and sisters, good afternoon. <laughs> At the moment, my English is very poor, <laughs> but thank God we have a translator. <laughs> Para mí es muy especial estar aquí. This is, to me, it's very special to share this time with you. Eh, nací dentro de la obra eh, oyendo hablar de los siervos de Sudáfrica. I was born in the, in the work of God and always hear about South Africa and the work within South Africa. Cuando la obra de Dios en Sudamérica estaba creciendo, when the work of the Lord was growing in South America, mejor dicho, estaba comenzando, it said it was starting. los siervos de Sudáfrica cruzaban el océano para ayudar. Uh, brothers from South Africa, they went across the ocean to help us. En momentos cruciales de la obra de Dios, como han existido en muchos lugares, in very special and critical times in, in the Lord's work, like in every, every other place, siervos de Sudáfrica cruzaron el océano para ayudar. They came over the, the ocean and they helped us. Ellos, el apóstol mayor comenzó diciendo de que nada es válido sin amor. Chief Apostle started saying that nothing is valid without love. ¿Y por qué hacían ese sacrificio? Por amor a Dios, a su obra y a las almas. 
Yo viajé desde Sudamérica. I, I came from South America. Pero seguramente en menos tiempo y más confortable que ellos. Eso es una figura de lo que va a ocurrir el domingo para mí. Hay un, hay un océano que separa las almas de la muchas almas de la eternidad de la redención. No importa si ese océano fue causado por eh, errores que ellos cometieron o si son los responsables directos. Lo importante es que hay un océano que los separa del Señor. Vamos a cruzar nosotros ese océano con amor. We will go across that ocean ourselves with love. Basamos, vayamos hacia ellos con los corazones abiertos. Let's go to them with an open heart. Entonces ya no estará ese océano de separación. So that big ocean is not going to be there separating us. Y para terminar, to conclude, a un amigo mío, un apóstol le dijo, ahora el anciano va a decir tres palabras. Now, to, to a friend of mine, uh, an apostle said to him, now, The district elder is going to say three words. En realidad le decía que, que, que no fuera, que fuera breve. In reality he said, be brief, uh, brief, you know, be short. <laughs> Pero él cumplió al pie de la letra. But he was very obedient. Y estas son mis últimas palabras. And these are my last words. Muchas gracias y amén. <laughs> Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> So, and last not least, we have here the District Apostle Helper, Zobotka from Canada. Okay, there's no problem with the language. <laughs> we speak English without an accent. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to uh, be here and to have experienced such a really, I would say, impactful evening with each and every one of you. We have really been spoiled over the last days, and that has repeated itself again and again. I spoke with uh, our district apostle, your district apostle, and I expressed my feelings when we were together on Wednesday night in the congregation, and I can do that again this evening. When I look into your eyes, I see also the eyes and the souls of many, many South African brothers and sisters who I am very happy have immigrated to Canada and have brought their gifts and talents. <laughs> Music again and again touches us. It, it leaves an impression which is not just a superficial impression. It leaves an impression that does not wear out, that does not somehow wash away with time. Um, in this sense, uh, music is really, really magical. And we see it also that music has the ability to, to transcend language. It has the, the ability to transcend accents. It has the ability to transcend even borders. And so the world has been brought together many, many times by music. And this evening hour, we feel again, music has the ability also to transcend time. And it has left an impression not only in our hearts and souls, and been a wonderful aid in helping us prepare for the day of tomorrow, but I feel also In this moment, it has transcended time already now and has made an impression on eternity. And what a wonderful beginning and preparation for the high point tomorrow that we can be together with our chief apostle and all of you for the divine service for the departed. Thank you again very, very much. Finally, your district apostle is here. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> 
I, I don't think it's necessary to, to add anything. But on your behalf, all of you who are here, to those who have come to us, our chief apostle, the chief apostle helper, and the district apostles, the district apostle helper, a sincere out of the heart, thank you for this magnificent preparation for the divine service tomorrow. And of course, all of you, our chief apostle has thanked those who have contributed towards this musical hour. The last, it all belongs to our heavenly father. He has made it possible. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. Meanwhile, at the Tafelsuch Church, final preparations were underway to prepare the venue for the special service the next day. Early Sunday morning, the 3rd of March 2013, there was a buzz of activity around the Tafelsuch Church in Cape Town, while the members were arriving for the divine service to be conducted by Chief Apostle Wilhelm Leber. After the initial flurry of activity as some 3,000 brothers and sisters hastened to be seated, a reverent, reflective atmosphere descended on the waiting congregation. A musical program combined with a video insert focusing on previous visits of Chief Apostle Leber further heightened the excitement. The southern tip of Africa provides the location for a meeting place that is quite extraordinary. It is here where the mighty Atlantic Ocean, having brushed the Namibian and west coast of the Cape with its icy, barren hand, greets the Indian Ocean. The majestic Indian Ocean, in contrast, brings with its warmth teeming marine life to the eastern and southern Cape as it winds its way south. It was largely due to the conditions created by this exceptional fusion of ocean currents that led the early seafarers to jointly name the Cape, Cape of Storms and Cape of Good Hope. This seeming contradiction takes on great spiritual significance as we reflect on it in the light of the unique activity of the service for the departed. Let us now briefly revisit some of the meetings with the Lord we experienced in the visits of Chief Apostle Leber that has led us up to the great moment that currently stands before us. At Pentecost 2006, Chief Apostle Leber had completed one year in his term of office. I just want to show my love to ich, you. Ich will euch meine Liebe zeigen. And we appreciate it very much to be here in Cape Town. It was in Tafelsuch, Cape Town, that the Chief Apostle marked this occasion. Now it's now one year that I'm working as a Chief Apostle. Und jetzt seit einem Jahr bin ich im Stammapostelamt. And I must say, brothers and sisters, I'm very thankful. Und ich darf sagen, ich bin sehr, sehr dankbar. I'm thankful for your support. Ich bin dankbar für eure Unterstützung. I'm thankful for your prayers. Ich bin dankbar für eure Gebete. I'm thankful for your love. Und ich bin dankbar für eure Liebe. And I assure you, and you, I will love you too. Approximately 1.7 million attendees in some 8,000 churches were able to hear the chief apostles call. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Parallel to these Pentecost festivities, the new apostolic church in this part of the continent also celebrated its 100-year anniversary. In the spring of 2007, 
a day after a festive divine service in Silvertown, many members from beyond the Cape Peninsula were able to meet the chief apostle as he travelled by road from Cape Town to George. Sunday, February the 18th, 2008, Newlands Cricket Ground. Approximately 35,000 youth and ministers are waiting for the chief apostle in the late afternoon sun. Already when the chief apostle appears on the balcony of the pavilion, the anticipation and excitement of the youth caused a buzz through the stadium. Unforgettable moments followed while the sun was making its way behind the mountain. The celebration of Holy Communion emitted special emotions and feelings. A page on the website of the New Apostolic Church Cape reported on Friday the 3rd of April 2009. Flight SA-221 from London Heathrow touched down at the Cape Town International Airport at 9.49. On board was Chief Apostle Wilhelm Leber, who is on his fourth visit to the Cape since he took up office in 2005. On hand to welcome him was District Apostle Noel Barnes and many new apostolic members in the employ of Airports Company South Africa, who grabbed the opportunity to come and greet their spiritual leader. On Saturday, the Chief Apostle will meet with all the rectors of the Greater Cape Town at Silvertown. After the opening hymn and prayer, the Chief Apostle elaborated by commenting among others that the rectors should watch over all those who work with them and assist them. They should watch over the organization within the congregation and that the basics of the faith are kept alive. In his message, the chief apostle continued that the rectors should take courage to answer questions and be strong in fellowship in the spirit. Thereafter, a conferment's choir took to the stage to present a musical program that was thoroughly enjoyed by an appreciative audience. This proved a fitting preparation for the Sunday morning's divine service. After the closing prayer, the Chief Apostle and those accompanying him undertook the arduous task of greeting each rector personally. What a satisfying encounter! The Divine Service for Conferments took place on Palm Sunday, 5th of April 2009. Towards the end of his serving, the Chief Apostle requested all the conferments present to recite their confirmation vow in unison. Now I have a wish. Can I say that very openly to you, dear confirmants, at this place? You are preparing for the day of confirmation. I would suggest that you recite the confirmation vow right now. I renounce Satan and all his work and ways. Those participating and those witnessing what was taking place were equally in awe of the intensity of this memorable and historic action. Holy Ghost. Thank you very much. That was great. In May 2010, an international apostles meeting took place in Cape Town. The program for the chief apostle and his companions included a visit around the Cape Peninsula on the Saturday. You've seen a bit more of Cape Town, how did you find the tour? Oh, it was just beautiful because uh, we have such a wonderful day, sunshine. And then um, at the street, many, many members, they were just happy to see us and I was happy to see them. It was just uh, spectacular. <laughs> the motto for the feast was, 
One spirit, one goal. A festive concert with worldwide audiovisual transmission for the first time followed at Silvertown that afternoon. More than 340,000 viewers were able to enjoy it. The high point of the weekend was the Pentecost Divine Service on the Sunday. The large church in Tafelzuch conveyed a festive atmosphere via the global transmission, reaching some 1.4 million viewers. Particularly stirring and emotional was the serving of Holy Communion for the departed. The loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. The chief apostle in Namibia. The expectation of the members was great. It had been nearly 20 years since a chief apostle last visited this nation in southern Africa. At the end of October 2011, the chief apostle conducted two services there. Welcome in Ventus. We are glad that you are here and look forward to the blessings you bring. From the time that the members of Strand Gastro Congregation received the news that the Chief Apostle would visit them, they started with a program of activities in preparation for this unique event. These activities culminated in a beach walk at which time a sand replica of their church was shaped on the strand. With this, the scene had been set for a most memorable visit the ensuing days. It was a day the members of Kwanabushle North had waited and prayed for tirelessly for two years, and today it is finally here. Then the moment arrived when Chief Apostle Leber and his companions of the church were greeted by a traditional African praise singer, Imbongi, who chanted praises and thanks. Entering the church hall, the congregation rose and welcomed all the visitors with the singing of a traditional Isikosa spiritual welcome song. Chief Apostle, waving both hands and with a visibly glowing smile, accepted their welcome with warmth. After the divine service, Chief Apostle spent some time with the members seated in the church hall and later made his way to the two marquee tents outside which hosted some 1,200 members whom he greeted. As an expression of thanks for being with them, the members clothed the chief apostle in traditional Kosa attire. At that moment, the heavens opened and a mighty shower washed the land, bringing with it further exclamation of blessing as the entire congregation was served food and started to sing songs of joy in a way they knew best, the traditional way. Reflecting on these special meetings in the past brings us into the right frame of mind for the unique gathering that is about to take place. Spiritually, the oceans of the living and the dead will meet at the altar of grace, and we are especially blessed to have the Chief Apostle present with us for this occasion. May the Cape of Storms be transformed into the Cape of Good Hope, as help is provided for those souls longing for salvation. And then, the unforgettable moment when the Chief Apostle stepped behind the altar for his last service for the departed before his retirement in May 2013. Great comfort and consolation was already evident in the opening hymn.
the chief apostle based the divine service on John chapter 6, verse 47. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life so far. In his sermon, the chief apostle focused on two specific groups of departed souls that had made an impact on him personally. The first group being slaves, and the second, those souls who for whatever reason have left the fellowship and never found the opportunity to return. The one group, yes, is connected to your continent, to Africa. Whenever I'm in Africa, at such a special day, service for the departed, I think of the slaves in former times. And when I think of that, what happened there, I'm deeply moved because that was so awful sometimes. And it's hard to imagine how they have entered eternity and what they feel. And it is not so easy to overcome that 
feeling of hate, of being against those who have punished them. And it's my wish that the portals of heaven may be opened for them, that they come into the freedom and have the opportunity to overcome all that what binds them. Actually, yesterday we had the opportunity to visit such a slave's lodge, as it is called here, and we got an impression that even here in this area, I didn't know that, I must confess, slaves were kept. And it is really something that moves very deeply when you see and imagine how they were concentrated on a small room, many thousands even. And they had no rights, no possibility to leave that place. They were just bound and the door was locked, as those who have explained that to, me, to us told us. And now when the door was locked, nobody could leave that anymore, that prison. But now, today, it goes the other way around. The door shall be opened for them in the yonder world so that they can leave their prisons and step into the light. And the other group is also a special group. Brothers and sisters, we now celebrate our 150 years jubileum, anniversary. And uh, we look back into the history of our church, 150 years, that's not too much, but it's a certain lifespan. And we can say that many were close to us, many have also joined us maybe for a certain time, but for some reason they have left us. We are no judges. We are not able to judge what caused them to leave the fellowship, the congregation. But let us pray for them. Let us be full of love and mercy to all those who have the need to, and the wish, the hope, to become free. So these are the two groups I'm praying for especially. Now I've read the textbook. The chief apostle then explained in detail what it means to believe in Jesus. I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. One who is a little bit critical could say, is it so easy to have everlasting life, to believe in him, that's it? And my answer is yes. On one side, on one hand, it is so easy, believing in him. That's the secret, that's the mystery, that is everything. On the other side, I must say, it's not that easy as you think, or may think. Because what is believing? Your people say when they say, okay, it could be that is believing. No, that's not believing. Believing is quite more. Believing consists of many parts, of many things. And the best example to show what believing means is Abraham. Abraham believed in God. And you can now see various parts of his belief, what this means, actually. First of all, he heard the call of God. There his believing started. God called him and said to him, please, Go out of your country into a land I will show unto you. He has heard that call. That was the first step of believing. And then Abraham took the next step. He said also yes to this call. He accepted this call. That belongs also to believing. Then came the third step that he had confidence in God. A very important step, brothers and sisters. Without confidence, you never can be a believer. That's impossible. He believed in God, 
The third step, very important, he had confidence, he trusted in him completely. And the fourth step is also very important and not so easy. He was obedient to God. He did that, what God said. He did not say, okay, I stay here in my house and I will wait what happens in the future. No, he ob was obedient to God and took his word and now immediately left his home, his house, and his country. And then comes finally a fifth step, and that also is part of believing that he was faithful to God. He could have said after five days or 10 days, so now it's enough. God, show me now where is the country where I should live. It was not so easy. He had to remain faithful in that. He had to remain under the guidance of God till the end. All that is believing, brothers and sisters. So that is now believing, these five steps. And this belief needs to extend into the realms of the afterlife. Chief Apostle Helper Schneider, District Apostle Anderson, and District Apostle de Ocker, who were called upon to assist, embroidered the core message and brought further assurance to the gathered congregation. And then it was time for the highlight of the service, with the celebration of Holy Communion and the dispensing of the sacraments for the departed. I feel that the congregation is prepared to help those who have the wish from the yonder world to come here to receive the sacraments. It's wonderful, brothers and sisters, to stand in unity and to be filled with mercy. When somebody may have the wish to look a little bit more into the yonder world and to see what happens right now. Let me tell you one thing. I'm remembered of that what Chief Apostle Streckeisen once said some years ago when he still was active as a Chief Apostle. He had the opportunity once to look into the yonder world, to see things he did not describe. But he said afterwards, some days he was not 
able to work normally. He was like a dreamer. It was so fantastic, he said. He had difficulties to come back on earth. So it is not given unto us to look into the yonder world. It is so incredible that it is beyond our understanding, beyond our intellect. What we can do is just believe. Let us believe. And then we will feel the power of God as it was told unto us. And then we will also have the feeling that many brothers and sisters and those who have the longing to belong to us can come to the altar and achieve that what makes also them joyful. First of all, I want to address those who want to be baptized, have this wonderful gift, the holy baptism. We think of the children that are never born. We think also of the various religions in this world where people have never made experience of the love of Jesus Christ. There are many, many. Indeed, Christianity is not the majority in this world. And so let's open our hearts for all of them. Here is water, and we take this water. It's just a vessel. The water is not the mystery, but that what is laid into the water by this secret power from on high. I now dedicate this water for holy baptism in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now in, I invite you all, all those who have the longing to be baptized, all those who can come and who have allowed, have the are allowed and have the permission to enter the altar. They are very welcome to us. We embrace them. We want to be close to them. We want to be a helper for them. Come all for the holy baptism. I baptize you now in the name of God. I baptize you in the name of the Son. I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. This is now the first act of grace, of love of our Heavenly Father. Now we address those who have come a little bit further, who come to the knowledge that holy baptism is not everything. There's something else necessary for the rebirth out of water and spirit, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm convinced that many have come to this conclusion. They have come to belief, and we invite them all that they now may be, by this wonderful gift, children of God. Come ye all who want to be sealed, have this power from on high. Receive now the gift of the Holy Spirit in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we greet those who want to have fellowship with us in the Holy Communion. We think of our brothers and sisters, all those who went before us, but we think also of those who have now, maybe the first time, the opportunity to partake in this wonderful gift. And I have this urgent feeling to invite also those who have left us for some reason or did not really join us because of various circumstances, but have now come to the wish in the yonder world to come back. We do not bind them. We do not say, oh, that's now over this time. No, the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ governs us also. 
and we embrace them, we invite them that they also may be quite near and have now special invitation to partake in this, what is given by the Lord Jesus. So I invite you all, come here for the Holy Communion that also your soul may rejoice and we are bound together by the wish to be partakers of the first resurrection of the day when the Lord Jesus will come again. So come here and receive what I lay into the hands of the two apostles, the body and the blood of Jesus. It's given to you all for your life, for your joy and for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Another great chapter in the history of the Kingdom of God was written as many souls were brought into the Fellowship of the Redeemed.
after the divine service, a farewell lunch with district rectors and wives rounded off a blessed Sunday. Monday the 4th of March 2013 marked the conclusion of Chief Apostle Labour's journeys in active ministry to South Africa. Over the course of eight years, he had served hundreds of thousands of members who continue their journey to the goal of their faith, the Day of the Lord. <laughs>